Hi, hello, welcome back. So today we will be seeing about um, anatomy of uh, urinary system. Okay. So hereby I have added a playlist for all the anatomy systems so that it will be really helpful for the candidates who are preparing for their medical coding interview. So when you go for an interview, they will be asking you to take uh, say about any one system or else they will be saying you the like talk about urinary system or talk about digestive system so that they will be asking you to say about the system which they are um, willing to hear. So that you can prepare the notes from which I have shared a video so that it is a very in a very easy format as well as easy to remember also. So when you talk about the system first you have to start with the functions of the system. So here I have added nearly six points uh, regarding the functions. So the functions of urinary system are first one is filtration, second one is base processing, third one is elimination. Fourth one is regulation, fifth one is other regulatory function and sixth one is conversion. Filtration in the sense gallons of fluids from the bloodstream. Water uh, waste process, uh, processing in the sense it takes it re uh, relieves all the waste through the urine. Elimination mm, mainly responsible for removing the nitrogenous waste. Regulation in the sense maintains a water salt between the acid and base balance. Other regulatory functions like um, maintaining the pressure etc. And conversion mainly kidney cells also convert vitamin D into active form. Next, we will be talking about the anatomy of urinary system. The urinary system consists of two kidneys, two ureters, a urinary bladder and a urethra. The urinary system is also known as a renal system which is responsible for removing waste products from the blood and eliminating them from the body in the form of urine. The kidney and the urinary system helps the body to eliminate liquid waste called urea and keep chemicals such as potassium and sodium and water in balance. Urea is produced when food contains proteins such as um, meat, poultry and certain vegetables are broken down in the body. Urine is carried in the bloodstream to the kidneys where um, it is removed along with water and other waste in the form of urine. So next uh, you have to uh, talk about uh, kidney. The anatomy of kidney first thing is we have two kidneys. Okay, This pair of pur purplish brown uh, organ is located below the rib towards the middle of the back. Their function is to remove waste products and drugs from the body, balance the fluid ba fluids, releasing hormones to regulate blood pressure, control production of red blood cells. The kidneys remove urea from the blood through tiny filtering units called nephron. Each nephron consists of ball formed of small blood capillaries called as glomerulus and a small tube called renal tubule. Urea together with water and other waste substances forms a urine as it passes through the nephron and down to the renal tubules. Next, we have to explain about the nephron. Nephron is a functional unit of the kidney. It consists of glomerulus and it is associated tubules through which the glomerular filtrate pass before it emerges as a urine. The structure of nephron comprises of renal tubule and renal corpuscles. So, when talking about renal tubule, it is a long and convoluted structure that emerges from the glomerulus and can be divided into three parts based on the function. The first part is called as proximal convoluted tubule due to its proximi proximity to the glomerulus. It stays in the renal cortex. The second part is called as the loop of Henle or nephritic loop because it forms a loop with descending and ascending limbs that goes through the renal medulla. Next, we have to talk about the capillaries. The capillaries of the glomerulus are enclosed by a cup-shaped structure called as Bowman's capsule. This structure extends to form highly coiled tubes called proximal convoluted tubule. The proximal convoluted tubule continues to form the loop of Henle which ascends to the distal convoluted tubule which in turn opens into the collecting duct. The major function of the tubule is reabsorption and the process can be either through active transport or passive transport. In addition, secretion by tubules helps in urine formation without affecting the electrolyte balance of the 
body so whenever you are uh, going through the notes no please see the images which is given so that it you can easily relate and understand next uh, in nephrons we as we said first we have to tell about the proximal convoluted tubule the blood brought by the renal artery is fil filtered by the glomerulus and then passes to the proximal convoluted tubule maximum reabsorption takes place in the proximal convoluted tubule of the nephron proximal convoluted tubule is a region of renal tubule where the reabsorption of essential substances like glucose proteins amino acids a major portion of electrolyte and water takes place and henle's loop is a, we have both ascending and descending limb being part of the same loop both descending and ascending limb show different permeability the descending limb is permeable to the water but per impermeable to the electrolyte whereas ascending limb is permeable to the electrolyte but impermeable to the water next you have to talk about the distal convoluted tubule the distal convoluted tubule which is part of the nephron connects and empties its content into the collecting duct that lines in the medullary pyramids collecting duct is a long straight tube where uh, the hydrogen and potassium ions are secreted to maintain the electrolyte balance of the blood this is also the region where minimum reabsorption of water takes place to produce concentrated urine here again i am telling you please go through the image or else just google and search the image in the um, uh, google form go sorry in uh, google so that you will easily understand like uh, how how it is related next you have to talk about the renal corpuscle the renal corpuscle consists of glomerulus surrounded by a bowman's capsule the glomerulus arises from an afferent arteriole and empties into the efferent arteriole the smaller diameter of an efferent arteriole helps to maintain high blood pressure in the glomerulus the bowman's capsule is divided into three layers outer parietal layer middle basement membrane inner visceral layer outer parietal layer it is made up of epithelial cells with a minute pores of diameter 12 mm middle basement membrane is a layer selectively permeable inner visceral layer it consists of large nucleated cells called podocytes which be a finger like projections called podocil so this is all about uh, renal corpuscle then we have to talk about the ureters the ureters are the narrow tube carrying urine from the kidney to the bladder muscles in the ureter wall continually tighten and relax forcing urine downward away from the kidney if urine back up or is allowed to stand still a kidney infection can develop about every 10 to 15 seconds small amount of urine are emptied into the bladder from the ureter so these are the points which you can add up uh, when you are talking about the ureter next we have to say about the uh, urinary bladder as well as uh, the urethra so next uh, topic which we will be discussing the, as the next point is about the urinary bladder so the bladder is a triangle shaped hollow organ located in the lower abdomen it is held in the place by ligaments that are attached to other organs and the pelvic bones the bladder wall relax and expands to store urine and contract and flatten to empty urine through the urethra the typical healthy adult bladder can store up to 2 cups of urine for 2 to 5 hours in this uh, bladder you have two sphincter muscle that is a circular muscle help to keep the urine from leaking by closing tightly a rubber band around the opening of the bladder next to the nerves in the bladder it alert the person when it times to urinate or empty the bladder so these are the points which you can tell about the bladder finally the urethra urethra is a tube allows urine to pass outside the body the brain signals the bladder muscles to tighten which squeezes urine out of the bladder at the same time the brain signals the sphincter muscle to release to let urine exit the bladder through the urethra when all these signals again occur in the correct order normal urination occurs so that's all about um, uh, urinary system like we have explained all the parts like kidney ureter bladder urethra 
all the parts as well as when you are explaining about the kidney you have to talk about the nephrons also because it is a functional unit of the kidney so hereby we have uh, completed the anatomy part so next we will be seeing about the physiology that is a urine formation so the urine formation is a result of three process that is glomerular filtration tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion so in glomerular filtration water and solutes smaller than the protein are forced through the capillary wall and pores of the glomerular capsule into the renal tubule in tubular reabsorption water glucose amino acids and needed ions are transported out of the filtrate into the tubule called cells and then enters the capillary blood tubular secretion hydrogen potassium creatinine and drugs are removed from the peritubular blood and secreted by the tubule cells into the filtrate so these are the three process like how the urine formation is occurring next you have to talk about the characteristics of urine in 24 hours the complex kidney filters some about 150 to 180 liters of blood plasma through their glomeruli into the tubules so daily volume in 24 hours only about 1 liter to 1.8 liters of urine are produced components urine uh, contains nitrogen waste and unneeded substances color freshly voided urine is clear and pale or to deep yellow color urine where order when formed um, urine is sterile and slightly uh, aromatic but if allowed to stand it takes an ammonia order because of the actions of bacteria and urine solutes ph urine ph slightly acidic around six specific gravity you can see that and finally micturation micturation or voiding is the act of emptying the bladder so in that you have to talk about the accumulation normally the bladder continues to collect urine about 200 ml uh, accumulation activation at this point stretching the bladder which activates stretch receptor transmission impulse transmitted to the sacral region of the spinal cord and then back to the bladder via the pelvic splanchic nerves called the bladder to go into reflex contraction passage as the contraction becomes stronger stored urine is forced to come out and then external sphincter because the lower external sphincter is skeletal muscles and voluntary control we can choose to keep it closed or um, or it can be relaxed then the urine is flushed out of the body so common disease and disorders are albuminuria the abnormal presence of albumin in the urine anuria suppression of urine secretion from the kidney that is renal failure next bilirubinuria presence of pigment in the urine biliuria presence of bile salt in the urine cystalgia pain in the bladder cystitis inflammation of the bladder cystocele protrusion of the bladder usually into the vaginal wall And few more disease conditions also are also added so that you can go through it. Next comes cystolithiasis, condition of stone in the bladder, diuresis, increase in the production of urine, dysuria, difficult in the passage of urine, enuresis, bedwetting, glycosuria, presence of glucose in the urine, hematuria, presence of blood in the urine, hydronephrosis, back, backlog of urine into the pelvic, causing pressure and damaging the kidney, incontinence, inability to control the processing of urine or feces, ketonuria, presence of acetone in the urine. next uh, next condition which you can see is nephritis nephrolithiasis and nephropathy nephrosis oliguria polydipsia polyuria so as i say nephritis is an inflammation of the kidney nephrolithiasis is a kidney stone 
and then nephrosis is diseases of the kidney oliguria is scanty production of the urine polydipsia is excessive thirst polyuria is passing large amount of urine nephrotic syndrome is extensive signs and symptom of the kidney disease next urethral uh, stricture remove uh, narrowing of the urethra uremia high level of urea in the blood urethritis inflammation of the urethra urolithiasis stone in the urethra u mm, urethritis inflammation of the urethra urothrosil protrusion of the urethra usually into the anterior vaginal wall so that's all about uh, urinary system so that you, we have seen the anatomy as well as the formation of urine functions and uh, structural unit of kidney and finally we have added what are the disease conditions and um, are based on the uh, urinary system so that's all about the urinary system so that you can make a note of it study it properly when preparing for your interview prepare it very well thank you so much for watching my video wish you all the best for your interview before that if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe and if you have any doubts please do ping it as a comment and if you find it interesting please do share it with your friends also thank you so much for watching my video take care bye bye